Hello there, my name is Obije Oru. I am a fashion designer or a fashion entrepreneur, like I like to call myself. Um, I'm a costume designer for TV and film, Nollywood, if you don't know what I mean. And welcome to Bike Design School. So, this is your first class, and I think that's awesome, 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 awesome. And um, I hope you've gone through the measurement taking class and you've gone through the um, tools that you're going to need. Um, like I said before, the foundation class, if you watch the intro video, is going to comprise of a basic trouser class, basic skirt class, bodies and sleeves, dark manipulation. So we are starting you with a trouser class. Yay! It's time to get started. Okay. So remember your tools, um, your rulers, your scissors. Remember paper, scissors, fabric, scissors, different. Um, your set of squares, your protractor. Yeah, that's about all you need for the trouser class. So first of all, I'm going to grab my paper. If you don't have um, the white pattern paper, you can work with the brown paper. So you're gonna need um, two uh, papers i'm going to merge them into two because we, we, we are preparing the pattern side by side like two patterns side by side um the front part of the pattern and the back part of the pattern so i'm merging two papers the masking tape is very important in pattern masking so um I'm going to merge two papers then i'm going to use one of the paper and draw out um what we're expecting we're expecting a straight trouser which is like a basic trouser block from the basic trouser block you'll be able to get the boot cut trouser you'll be able to get the pencil or the peg trouser or capri trousers um and then you'll be able to get shorts from it so this is your basic. Anything after that becomes an advanced class. So let's merge the paper like this first. If you have any paper bigger than this normal one, um, you can use it. If you want this white paper and you don't know where to get it from, you can call me. I can help you get it. So merge your papers like this. Your paper. So when you measure paper, this is what you have. Okay, so for the, the trouser takes off like the whole of the table, so I'm just going to move some stuff here. And fabric, what we're going to use to cut out our sample. Right. Okay. So after you've measured the paper like that, you want to divide it into, fold it into two equal halves. Okay, two equal halves like that. I'm going to take my longest ruler. Ah, look how that is there. So that's cool. I'm just going to mend it by placing the masking tape over. Okay. So, grabbing your pencil. Um, I'm going to um, draw a straight line in the middle of the paper that you folded. Straight line. Okay. You're able to move your paper around like this around like this okay so um so one side becomes the left hand side um, this is the left side i like to use this place for my front pattern and this is the right side 
I like to use this for my back pattern. And um, I like to use it for my black back pattern. And it can be any way. Like you can decide to use the back here and the front here. It doesn't really matter. It depends on how, um, if you're left-handed or you're right-handed. So the first thing I do when I get my pattern is to take two inches from the edge of the paper, which I call the top line. I talked about this in your measurement taking class. Uh, so this I like to call the top, two inches from the edge of the paper. It's called the top line. That's okay. So I'm going to label it top line. Okay. All right. So next we need to do is to figure out um, the measurements that we need for the trouser to make a basic trouser. So I'm just quickly going to write here. I know you already know it because we did this measurement class, but let's just go over it again. So you're gonna need um, the waist measurements, the hips, the seat measurements, um, the center to the knee measurements, center to the floor measurements, and thigh measurements. I don't use a thigh measurement, but some people use it. I don't use it. I only use it to cross check. So for the purpose of this class, um, we're using 28 for the waist. I'm doing a perfect size eight um, trouser. So we're using 28 um, for the waist, 38 for the hip, the seat measurement is 10. Um, the center to the knee will be 23. The center to, be f to the floor will be 44. I'm leaving the thigh as 21. So I'm not really sure about the 21 because I didn't actually take anybody's measurement. But make sure you take the thigh measurement. Okay, so let's get started. Um, remember your decimals also. They come in very, very handy. Remember I said, 1.8 is equal to 0 0.125, 1 quarter is 0 0.25, half an eighth is 0 0.5, um, which is 1 over 5, so um, 5 eighths is 0 0.65, 6 eighths is 0 0.675, 7 eighths is, oh, I mixed that up, I'm coming out quickly. So, 1 eighth is 0 0.125, to eight, which is a quarter, is 0 0.25. Um, three eight is 0 0.375. Um, four eight, which is half an inch, is 0 0.5. Five eight is 0 0.625. Six eight is 0 0.75. Seven eight is 0 0.875. And then you go to one inch. Okay, do that in the measurement taking. With the measurement taking. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you do is you secure your hip. Um, the hip measurement is usually eight inches from the waist. It's usually eight inches from the waist. So um, you're presuming this part of the pattern, this line will be presumed to be the waistline. So um, the trouser is a lower body measurement. Lower body pattern is what we're about to do. So notice the way I flip my pattern. So I'm going to first secure um, the hip line. So I'm coming from my, so I'm measuring eight, because I've said um, it, the a regular hip is eight inches from the waist. And um, if the person has a low waist, then it will differ. Um, the person who has a high waist and it will differ also. What you need to do is to place your tape on the waist to the hip. So um, I'm marking eight inches here on my paper on both sides. Eight inches on both sides. And then I'm connecting. I guess I can use the shorter one. 
I'm connecting lines like this. Secure like your lines like this. This becomes your hip line. Becomes your hip line. Next measurement you want to take is the seat line measurement. Very important. If you don't get your seat line measurement well, you have crazy crotch. You know what that is? Like when the crotch is all gathered with fabric. You need to get it properly. So for size eight, like a 38 inch. I'm using a 10, but I don't know what measurements you're using to do this. Uh, make sure you take the seat measurement properly. So use a 10 here. Use a 10 here also. And then you connect the line. So this will be your seat line. This will be your seat line. Okay. Next um, is the knee measurement. So from the waist also down. We're using 23 in this case. So I'm stopping at 23 here. I'm doing and applying the same thing on the right side of my pattern, which is my back pattern. Right side, same thing on my left side. I'm still applying the same thing on both sides. Okay. Next measurement would be the C2S center to floor. So this is the knee measurement center to the knee. Center to the knee. I abbreviated to C2K. And then the next one will be the center to the floor, which I've called. I'll just use like I called 44 before, but I'm just gonna use 42. Make the trouser length as long as you would like. Alright. Up and go right again so we took um two inches from the edge of the paper and we got the top line and that line becomes the waistline automatically then we took eight inches from the waist which gave us the hip line and i said the hip line also varies depending on if the person has low hips or high hips and i've already taught you what to do with that then the next measurement that we took um, next line we secured is the seat line measurement for size 8, 38 inch um, hip, that's 10. Then we, we secured the knee line and then we secured the full length line, which is the C2F center to the floor. And now we're about to start putting in our measurements. Yay! How excited are you? I am. So this looks kind of like funny, but when we start putting in everything that we need to put, it will be all good. So the first thing that we need is our hip measurements, which is 38 inches. Um, so we're going to take our 38 inches and we're going to divide that into four. Why are we dividing it into four? Because we're making the patterns in quarters. So this part is for the front measurement, um, which is a quarter. This part is for the back measurement, which is a quarter. So if you add it up together, you have like four, four parts. Um, so the hip measurement is 38. I don't know what yours is. So you take your, your hip measurement and you divide it into four. And you 
divide your hip measurement into four. Mine is 38 and um, that gives me 9.5, right? So I indicate you there. I do that on the waistline, on the hip line, on the seat line, okay? I've done that for the back measurement. I'm doing the same thing for the front measurement. 9.5 here. Same thing applies, 9.5, 9.5. Then I connect the line. Like that. Gives you a box, like a nice box. Okay, connect the line. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop here and show you what the straight trouser looks like. This is it. This is otherwise known as the palazzo, but this is not what I like to call the palazzo. There's another trouser that I will teach you in the advanced class, which I call the wide leg pants or the flared pants. They're really full and really beautiful. So this is, um, this here is the waistline. This here is the hip line. This here is the seat line. This here is the knee line, and this here is the full length line. Okay, so we are about to learn how to do this curve of the trouser. Is this curve is so important? So so important. If you get it wrong, you just get the flow of the trouser like real bad. And for people who do like um, freehand cutting, I hear when they say, "Oh, when you're cutting the front of the trouser." When you want to cut the back of the trouser, you, you take you extend by two inches. That's guess it's guesswork. The pattern drafting, you get it like ex, exact more exactly. It's exactly and it fits. Even when um your garment is big, if you pattern drafted, it it will still sit on you like beautifully. You'll be able to manage it even if it's big, you know what I mean? Okay, so let's go. We're about to get our this curve of the trouser here okay so we're tricking the seat line next the extension of the crotch so what you do is that you take your hip measurement and you divide that into four which is 9.5 for my 38 inch um, hip I don't know what yours is um, then you take that 9.5 for the back measurement you divide the 9.5 into two so um, that should be like 4.75, I don't know, but I just normally cheat for mine. I just go to where I have my 9.5 and I fold my tape into like this, like this. It's just really easy. Yeah, it's 4.75, that's what it is. I'm good at math, yay! All right, so. So I go there and I secure my 4.75, which is 4 3 quarter. Learn your decimals well. So I secure there. So I go to the front, I take the 4.75, and I divide that into two again. Like this, I'm just folding my tape into two again. So that gives me a 2.375, which is otherwise known as 238. That's it. Okay, so there are two ways to um, curve the heat, um, the curve of the trouser, the C of the trouser. Two ways to do that. You can just use your um, curve, place it. Um, if you don't have this, I'm going to teach you a formula real quick on how to get the curve of the of the trouser. But this is what I normally would do for the front pattern. I will go in one inch like that and I'll place my curve here like this slightly away from that point slightly below that point also this point I don't I normally don't label my patterns you know people label A B C D I think it, it confuses people it confuses me though so if you would like to label your pattern, please go ahead and label yours. I don't label because it confuses me. I don't know if it confuses you also. So I'm just going to place my curve like this. Just try and do exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. 
so I'm now going to draw the C quite nicely. So that's what we get, right? I'm going to go and do the same thing at the back here. So for the back, I'm going to come up one and a half inch here like this. I'm making the pattern longer at the back. And I'll tell you why real quick. I'm coming like that. And then, um, so that's one and a half inch. And then I'll go in one, one quarter. And the reason why we do that is to give allowance for the butts. You have to give allowance for the butts. So do that. Take your curve and you find the part that is comfortable for you. Right? And you can do it in two bits if it's not really comfortable, like what I'm about to do. So go like that, replace it like that, and then you get that. Okay, so the curve is ready, as you can see. All we need to do now for the straight trouser. Notice the way I'm swelling my paper around. I, I keep telling you, your paper needs to work for you. You need to guide your paper. You need to, I can, I can draw a line from any part of paper. So see, if I swing it like this, I'm going to be able to place my ruler like that and connect the line. If I swing it like this, I'm going to be able to place my ruler like this and connect the line. If I swing it like that, I can do the same thing. So you need to be comfortable with your with your tools, with your paper, with your ruler, with your pencil. Comfortable at all times. So I'm just going to connect the lines all the way down. All the way down like this. Like that. Connecting again all the way down like this. Yep. So we have two parts of our trouser so for the back because we, we have a back rise now so this is what we do here okay so we have two parts of our trousers the front pattern and the back pattern we're going to cut it out real quick so um see how i like the look so this is your straight pattern for the trousers, the basic. From here, you can do your boot cut, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can do your pencil, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, and you can do shorts. So we're gonna use one pattern, one fabric, and we're gonna create three different things. So let me cut up my pattern now. Remember to use your paper scissors and not your fabric scissors. So first, I'm just going to divide it in the middle. I haven't put any dots on the pattern. There's no dots. I haven't shaped the pattern or shaped the pattern or contoured the pattern. I haven't done any of that. is ready the second leg which is the back leg Okay, 
So I'm going to take you take a critical look on your pattern and make sure that your lines are straight, right? And you can use your right angle to do that. If you have your right angle, you can use that. See, I suspected my pattern wasn't quite straight. That's why. See. So use your right angle to make sure that your pattern is straight, right? Sure that your pattern is as perfect as possible all these little details are so important like if you have the funds slightly bigger than what it is what it's supposed to be what happens is that your seam line will change and you don't want that you feel like you you fit it all right so i think the pattern is ready what we're going to do now is that we're going to cut the straight um trouser when we're done with that straight some people call it palazzo we're gonna put it on the mannequin. We're gonna see what it looks like. Then we're gonna take um, the same pattern and get a boot cut out. And um, when we're done with that, we're gonna cut it up, sew it, see what it looks on the mannequin. Looks like on the mannequin. And then we're also now going to take the same pattern, make a pencil trouser, cut it up, put it on the mannequin, take the same pattern paper, make um, um, get out a pair of shorts, cut it up, put it on the mannequin, see what it looks like. So we're cutting this up. I'm gonna grab my fabric real quick. I'm using calico, otherwise known as tail in Yoruba. Um, I don't know, people out of Nigeria, I don't know what they use. Muslim paper, Muslim cloth. I don't think it's the same thing. But any lightweight fabric will be good for your samples. You don't want to use um, like an expensive fabric to do your samples. You don't need for that. Okay, as you can see, uh, my fabric is well ironed already. You want to make sure that your fabric is always ironed before you start cutting. No need for, you don't need to have creases because with creases, you can either reduce or increase what it is that you're supposed to be cutting. So I'm going to start with the front part of the pattern. Just like that. Okay, so I'm grabbing my pins. This is my pin cushion, self made, made by myself. So I'm securing all the corners. Before I start cutting. Secure as many corners as possible. So your pattern is lying flat on the fabric. Um, what your sewing is is going to be um, what you call sewing allowance but it's ease because it's the ease that you're using stitching your, your garment together 
So do you want to use a one inch or a half inch? For trousers, I, I find that I like to use half inch because I want it ironed like real flat and I don't want any bulk. So you start to put your ease on your pattern paper. I'm using half an inch, so here's what I'm doing. You extend the pattern by half an inch. Come to the form of the trouser. Do the same thing. Doing the same thing here on the side also. And then you want to give it um, maybe a folding allowance. So I'll give mine two inches. Yes, you don't have to draw on but I like to draw for accuracy just easier so I'm using a um, charcoal pencil to work it's easier for me and you know, the camera will pick it up properly but you may want to use the Taylor's chalk that works real good also Give a half inch sewing allowance at the top of the trouser also for when you want to fold your bands or if you want to do jumpsuits so there you have it okay it's now time to cut and remember i said fabric scissors different from paper scissors this is my fabric scissors let's cut Start with the tip of the scissors or with the hand of, or you can cut with this tip or you can cut with this part. I don't know what this is called, but um, I use the tip. You need to practice your hold on the scissors so you can get like uh, a straight line. I'm going to do the same thing for the back pattern now. The front pattern is ready. I'm just going to toss it over there. I'm grabbing another fabric already flat ironed. Okay. Um, grabbing my back pattern, placing it. So I'm going to have a bit of a problem here because this is not quite long. So I'm going to get something else. Okay. I'm going to take my pins to secure again. This. So repeat exactly what I did before. Half inch ease. Whatever you do in the front pattern, apply. Okay. So the back pattern is ready also. 
The next thing I'm going to teach you how to do is how to notch. And what notching means to a pattern drafter or a tailor or a seamstress. What notching means to design also. Like it's really, really important. People just really like overlook it. So when we say notch your lines, when I say notch your lines, I don't know what other people say. It's to secure each important line on the pattern so you can match it to another part of the pattern. So in the case of the trouser, you know, we have the front side of the trouser and then the back side of the trouser and we have to match it. So we have to make sure that the lines are matching so that the trouser is sewn properly, sits properly and looks good. So let's see about this notching. So we start with the front. So first I notch my hip line like that, cut like a little triangle there. I notch my seat line like that. I go and notch my knee line also. On one side, I repeat on the other side. I repeat on this side. I do that. I repeat on this side. I do that. I do that. Okay. So the front is ready. I'm going to grab the back pattern. I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to my hip line. Hip line. My seat line. My knee line on one side. So bring the pattern to the next side, do the same thing. Okay. Um yep. like that. So now we take out the pin. If you're a little bit overwhelmed, what you need to do is to stop, play back your video and start all over again. That's the beauty of having a video class. You can start from wherever you want, stop, go back again and keep doing it until you get it, okay? Um, so I'm taking out my pattern now. Um, do my pins back in the cushion. I'm very horrible with pins. I don't know about you. I lose my pins like always. So I'm going to keep this pattern because we're going to use this um, the same pattern to achieve our boot cut um, trouser. So this is the back on the one side. It's now the pins of the front also. Pattern inside also, I'm going to achieve the boot cut from this one. Let's put it there. So you're going to grab one piece of your front pattern and one piece of your back pattern, right? You're grabbing it like that. You're going to place them above each other, and then your notching points, you put them together. So you see, this is my hip notching points. Secure with my pin, my seat notching point. Secure my pin also. My knee notching point. And the knee notching point. Secure my pin. All right. That's one leg of the trouser. Same thing here. Same thing here. Okay. The heat measurement meeting. The knee 
waiting on one side go to the other side do the same thing like this so you're going to be stitching um everywhere you put your pin you're going to be stitching along that line okay and I, I recommend that you stitch your needle and thread in the beginning except you already know how to use the machine then that's fine if you don't know how to use the machine don't spell it yet so you see we're almost there then you take the front part of both patterns the front um, trouser pattern place like this you're not chain meeting around the hip line and you secure also like that okay we're almost done here Then you're doing the same thing for the back, securing it. This is what you have at the end of the day. We're going to go in and stitch it so you can see what it looks like. So you're going to run your stitch along this line all the way down here. You run your stitch along this line all the way down. So you're running your stitch here all the way down. So when you're done, you're going to have like a perfect trouser. So I'm going to take it inside, stitch it real quick, and bring it back out. Um, if you're having problems with the stitching, send me a message. If you're having anything, any extra problems with the stitching, send me a message. And um, let's see, I can show you how it's done one on one. But that's it basically. Alright, I'm just going to run in and stitch it, and then I'll bring it right back. So the straight pants are ready. Um, the only difference here is that I've curved um, the waistline a little bit. I'm going to show you on the next um, trouser how to curve your waistline. So uh, I'm just going to put it real quick on the mannequin. Let's see what it looks like. What it looks like. So this is what it looks like. Um, the waistline is fitted. I'm going to show you how to shape the waistline while we are doing the boot cut trouser. There's also going to be a video on how to stitch your trouser properly, how to put your patterns together and stitch your trouser properly. Um, you'll either be here on this platform or you'll be on the YouTube channel by Design School. Um, I'm just going to take you in, take you. Um, show you quickly how to place your patterns together and stitch your trousers together it will be done in my tailoring shop um, I'll record that so this is what your straight cut trouser looks like palazzo to a lot of people I think it's real cute if I still say so myself so it is time for us to shift to the next trouser which is the bootcut trouser. We're going to use the patterns that we use for the palazzo. And then we're going to use the same patterns and we're going to use the patterns and design the bootcut trouser. And then we're going to cut it out. Let's go.
Yeah, so it's time for us to learn how to do the bootcut trouser. Here is the straight pan slash palazzo without the dots, with already shaped waist. But when we we're doing the when we we're cutting out before, we didn't shape the waist. So I'm gonna teach you how to shape the waist and how to insert that also in this one. So before um, before we do we start to um, draft the bootcut trouser, I'm just gonna show you real quick um, what the shape of the bootcut trouser is. So it can be guided. So the bootcut trouser is shaped like this. It tapers to the knee and flares out to the bottom. Some people call it old school. Flared pants. So you have uh, maybe that there. So that's it. So it tapers to the knee and then it flares out. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Looks like that. okay so i'm going to show you how to do this real quick so obviously this is your hip line seat line then the knee is here knee line and this is the full length this is the waist and then you have your that here okay like i said before you're grabbing the same pattern the same pattern okay i saved this so we're gonna grab the same pattern the first thing we want to put in here is what we call the crease line that's that line that's normally in the middle of your trouser what that line helps us do is it helps us shape the trouser properly so i'm just going to grab my tape roll see i'm placing um the tape on my seat line all the way to the end and I have 14 and a half here I don't know what you have and I'm going to find the midpoint of that which is seven and a quarter okay so that's seven and a quarter I'm going to mark that all the way so we're finding the midpoint which I'm calling the crease line it's called the crease line actually so you're placing your tape on the seat line from one end to the other and you're finding the midpoint of that um, my seat line gives me for my back um, pattern gives me 14 and a quarter so that's um seven and one eight sorry let me see there seven and one eight on all the lines seven one eight on all the lines seven and eight on all of the lines all of it okay so you take your rule and connect Connect. Right. All right. And the fast pattern. Same thing for the front. Take your rule. Place it on your seat line. All the way. We have twelve and a half here. So that is six and a quarter. On the lines, on all the lines, six and a quarter. Six and a quarter, okay. Um, Seat line, our crease line. This is the crease line. Crease. Now we've secured it. What we need to do is now to shape the trouser according to the measurement that we would like. So we want the shape. This is the shape of trouser that we want. Let's start by tapering the knee. So I'm going to be using. 16 for around the knee 16 so what i'm going to do is 
on either side i'm applying four inches on either side four inches i'm going to take it connected to that point there point something i don't label my patterns i'm sorry i want to label yours is fine confuses me okay so on either side i'm going to go to the bottom part and i'm going to use five and a half okay i'm flaring it out i'm going to use five and a half okay that's it okay look at that okay i'm going to do the same thing for the back pattern Four inches on the knee on either side of the pattern. Connect it to the seat line. Okay. The bottom also same thing five and a half five and a half connect it okay okay so that's not all they're almost there the next thing we want to do is shape on the way so that we can get like this nice curl we'll just the trailer will just sit properly here so what we need to do first is get your dark line out so these parts of the pattern become um, useless to work so we're going to cut it out let's put it on a bit and cut out this part okay so mm -hmm. I want to put dots into my trousers. This is what I do. From the center point, I'm going to go in four inches, like that. Four inches. I'm going to connect it straight down. Right. Then I'm going to mark half inch on either side. On either side okay and my dot is going to be about four inches long okay four inches long so you see so that was well, now time to shape on it so um, if the waist of the of the garment is 28 inches that means we're taking 28 and we're dividing that into four that will give us seven so we want seven on a quarter of the pattern you just place your tape here uh, measure it up to that point and remove those dots and there you get your seven okay then you just grab the deep curve nicely You curve it. Also, you want to kind of contour the seat line so that the trouser is a little bit, a bit more snug. Um, so you, on the seat line by the hip, you go in three eight here, right? So you will connect that line. That's for like a snug fit. Connect that line to the knee and to the hip. All right. So you can squeeze this out now. Okay. Nice there.
pattern is ready. See how much it looks like this. Look at that. You have the hip line, the seat line, the dots, the knee line, the full length. So we're going to do the same thing, apply the same thing on the back pattern also. I'm just going to quickly toss this one on the side. Come back to it. Okay, what are we doing here? We need to get in the dark for the back also. So we're going in four inch, same thing, same thing we did. Four inches here. Connect the line like this. Okay, half inch on either side of the line also. Half inch, half inch. Make the dot at the back long six inches because we've got a butt six inches because we've got a butt and then okay so we're time to shape the sides of the trouser we're going to try and get seven inches here also like we did um for the front pattern what we have here is really small but it's fine Cover it a little bit. If you are at a point where you think you're a bit confused, stop the video, go back to the very beginning, start all over again. You just need to keep doing it until you get it. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. Contour this place a little bit to give it a more snug fit. Okay. We connect this line. That connect it to and then cut it out. Cut out the points that we don't need. Cut out the points that we don't need. All right, so this is also ready. We're now gonna grab fabric and we're gonna cut it and see what it looks like. Okay. So I'm grabbing the same fabric. Told you the boot cut comes out of the white lace or the palazzo or the strip top. So this is the front pattern. If you remember, I'm grabbing it right, and I'm placing our front pattern, the new one, on it. Okay, this is the new front pattern. I'm placing it on it. Oh, I'm going to secure with my pins as usual. Secure it with my pins. Okay. Um, again you decide how many inches you want as your seam allowance again i'm using half
this one is ready to cut. Grabbing my what? Fabric scissors. And I'm cutting. already know how to notch on my knee on my hip take my crease line forward also in case I want to um, give the trouser a crease line on my crease line too Right, hold that, put on the side. Place it. Secure. Get your ease. Now we cut. All right, our pattern is ready. Too much as usual. Notch, 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 notch your knee, at the hip, on the seat line, notch your crease, notch your darts also. I need to talk about notching the darts, it's very important. Notching and marking the darts. So that's how you notch your darts. Also, watch it. Show you a real quick, easy way to just how I mark my neck. So, I'm gonna be using chalk so that it can come off. So, the back button is ready. I will take out the pins now. Keeping the pattern also because we are going to use it for the pencil. 
Capri cigarette trousers, however you like to call it. So this pattern is ready. Just gonna grab the front pattern. I mark the dots. Didn't mark it earlier. Mark the dots. Notch it. Dots. Notch it. There's a video showing you how to hold the dots properly in um, trousers or skirts. I want to take a look at that. It will be here on the platform or it will be on the YouTube channel. Either or both of them. Okay? So, that's ready. I'm going to take it out. my pattern secure for when I sew and we're cutting the other trousers the cigarette pencil capri all of them okay so another way of um, joining your trousers you can secure the middle part first like this I'm going down my pin now I secure it first like this If you want to still watch the video that shows you how to stitch the trouser properly it's there for you to watch okay hold the back two like that like that like that okay so there you go then you place it on top this and we place it on top like this okay see so you the hip and the seat line meets the new line is missing also so you're taking one quarter of the back and, or rather half of one half of the front and one half of the back and you're putting it together that's what you're doing mm. people some people just go straight to sewing before uh, instead of um, securing with pins I always advise you not to do that except like you're an, an absolute expert even when you are when you secure with pins you are sure of exactly what it is that you're doing your, your mistakes are minimal okay um, it's a lot of work the work that makes your stuff come out like pretty good okay so this is what a bootcut trouser looks like all cleaned up I'm gonna bring out a sewn version now if you're having difficulty stitching your trousers together you can reach out to me personally or you can watch the video that has um, tutorials on how to stitch the trousers okay all right so this is what it looks like all stitched together this is it you can see that it looks exactly like this So this is what my bootcut trousers look like. The dots at the back. The dots in front. So we're almost there. We're almost there. If you're tired, take a break. Uh, and I advise you not to do everything in one week, please. You need to break it down. For the first week, you learn how to do the straight pants properly. Or rather for the first week you learn how to draft the pattern draft the pattern every day for five days then you cut it out when you can properly re remember everything keep doing it until you don't have to go back to the video you know what i mean so so i recommend that you draft the pattern the first week then by the second week you can start cutting by the third week you can start sewing by the fourth week you'll be perfect and then you can move to the next craft 
Okay, so um, we're going to learn how to do the Capri cigarette pencil trouser now. And we're going to be doing it from the boot cut. We're going to take our boot cut trouser, uh, our boot cut pattern, and then we're going to make our slim pants. Slim cigarette Capri pencil. I call it pencil. Okay, so I'm grabbing the pattern, of course, as per usual, grabbing my um, this cut pattern. Just going to do some real quick and lay them side by side, like that. So, what does the pencil trouser look like? What does it look like? What does it look like? Let's see. Um, so it tapers down to the knee and then tapers down to the ankle. Like that. So we've got the hip line, the sit line. We've got the dot now. And then you have the crease line still and your knee line. So this is what it should look like when we're done. So um, for the pencil trouser, the upper half of the pattern remains the same. So we're going to be treating the lower half of the pattern. Okay, so I'm just going to grab it. So it depends on how, how tight you want the trousers to be around your ankle. How slim do you want it to be around your ankle? So I'm going to be using six for around the ankle. So I'm using three on either side. Three on either side. So three on this side and three on the other side. Okay like that so that means 12 in total three on either side like that like that so i grab my ruler and from my knee i connect the line remember we're not touching the other half of the paper the, the upper part there's no need because it already it already fits nicely so i taper like this I come and I do the same thing for the back pattern. I tip her like this. Same thing for the back pattern. I tip her like this. So these are the corners that we don't need anymore. I don't need it anymore, anymore. So I'm just gonna grab my paper scissors, cut it off. Cut it off. Like that. Like that. Like that. Okay. So like that. Okay. So there you have it exactly like what our sketch is done so we're almost done after this then we do short or nickels or yeah and then the trouser class will be done i'm so excited how excited are you so i'm just going to grab the fabric from before okay and then we're going to place the pencil into the boot cut so remember that i said your basic trouser, which is the straight cut, which is your basic pattern. From there, you can develop your boot cut pattern. From there, you can develop your pencil. See, if you just get one thing correct, every other thing will follow suit. So, uh huh. I'm going to. Take out the pins from before. I was going to cheat, but it's not going to be possible. All right, so our patterns are secured on um, on the fabric, and the top part of the pattern is already fine. Right? We don't need to touch it. See, we don't need to touch that part. 
So we're going to just taper the bottom part so that we can have the slim fit for our slim trousers, capri trousers, cigarette pants, pencil trousers. Okay, so you already know what to do with this one. Notch, notch, notch. All the top parts are notched already. I'm seeing I have um, the top is notched. I'm just going to secure the knee again so that I'm sure because I think the pattern moved a little bit. But everything is notched on top already. So we now do the needful. Then you take out your pins. So I'm just going to first secure the middle part of the trouser for the front, like this. And you're sewing along this, along this line. If you're not really clear, I've told you already, you want to check the YouTube page for our trouser sewing class, like how to put your um, patterns together on a sewing machine or here on the platform where we're learning this if you don't find it here you find it on the youtube page um you're not paying for that it's free okay so taking out the pins now so we're keeping this because we're cutting our shorts from this like also with the trouser pattern you cut one one pattern and you get like different things from inside of it how cool is that so i'm keeping this for the last one so this is what that looks like now i'm going to repeat the same thing for the back pattern repeating the same thing for the back pattern okay um, okay so we are going to secure it, okay, knee, ankle, crotch, and we're going to see what it looks like now, ready, sewn. Having problems with putting your trousers together, may I remind you also to go to the YouTube channel um, of Bite Design School and check for the class the tutorial is free the tutorial that shows you how to stitch your trousers together how to also put pockets and we'll probably be there right now yeah we'll be there so how to stitch your trousers together on the youtube channel you'll find it there so let me grab um what the pencil trouser is going to look like on the mannequin let's look at it if you have any questions like i said email me or call me personally on my phone number or my email address So this is what it looks like so it um, starts from the waist hugs the hip a little bit slings down to the knee and tapers to the bottom so that's what we have there and the next set of next type of trouser we want to do is the shorts well, this is shorts
Um, we're gonna take the pattern seal, the pencil pattern, where our pattern is up to. And then we're just gonna make sure to submit. This one is really, really, really easy. We're gonna make shorts from it. So, your shorts can be anything from the knee and above, okay? So you need to decide what length you want your shorts to be, okay? I'm going to be using 13 for my shorts, because I want like short shorts. I don't know how long. So all you need to do is actually just measure down, down on your pattern. Measure down on your pattern, like that. And you cut off everything. Just here, and this becomes useless. And if you don't want your shorts to be um, slim, slim fit, fitted, then you use the pattern from the straight trouser to make your shorts. Because remember, we didn't contour that, we didn't shape, we didn't put any shape. Uh, that was a bit free. So if you don't want shorts that are like really slim and fitted on you, you want to use that pattern instead of this one. So that's all you need to do with this one. Just cut off this point. Cut off that point. That's it. This is all done. So the back is ready. Um, I'm going to go to the front also and measure 13. Okay. Cut it off. Okay. Done. So, there are your shorts. I'm still going to grab the pattern from before. Yeah, I'm still going to grab this. Still, still gonna grab this. Here is the font pattern. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. Everything is notched already. Just going to give you about a one inch allowance. Cutting it off. I'm going to do the same thing for the back. things apply notch 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 every corner put the front together put the back together we're gonna see what a um, one that's already done looks like like I said before if you're having problems in stitching your trousers I'm just like I'm just really saying this all over again because I know that people could be having problems just so you can hit me up one on one and I can take you through or check the YouTube page by design school you'll find a tutorial on how to hold the darts properly on a pair of trousers and how to stitch along what lines and what to do with it and how to even iron you'll find you find that okay so let's put this on the mannequin and see what it looks like and that will be the end of today's class
okay? Imagine this in a play like in Ankara. Amazing stuff. of the class finally how long did it take you to get your own done um it was an amazing class i hope it was amazing for you also i had so much i always have fun when i'm going past and like i'm like in my habitat so we saw the roundup of um summary of the class we did the straight pants um the palazzo if you're wondering what kind of fabric would be amazing for that chiffons and silks amazing Chiff chiffon and silk is amazing for that um you can wear that like real casual you can wear with a t-shirt or you can wear with um, a blouse yeah so for the palazzo the, um, chiffons and silk um we did the boot cut trouser um for the boot cut trouser that's amazing to wear to work by the way if you put a pair of um a shirt on on top of that is amazing even the, for the palazzo too for the boot cuts you want to do um cotton cotton fabric um damask fabric crepe fabric really nice um then we did the straight um slim pants that was the most perfect pants for work most people like that for work we put a jacket over it and it's amazing you can also do cotton damask brocade um crepe for that also um ankara also ankara for the boot cut too be, will not be bad then we did the shorts which is what we rounded up with and the shorts amazing for the beach for the beach for the beach okay so this is the end of the trouser class i hope you were able to learn as much as i think you should have been able to you just need to remember that you have to keep practicing over and over and over and over again you have to always practice practice um, give yourself like a, um, a deadline or time you all arrange your work tell yourself in one week i want to do this in two weeks i want to do that okay um follow the assignments also you want to talk to your team members also um help each other see you in the next class which is the step class that one is going to be amazing the step class is amazing you really really love it so see you next class bye